Let's work with implicit differentiation using trig function and let's find the second derivative of a function using implicit differentiation and we'll also find the equation of a tangent line using implicit differentiation. So we're going to be working with three problems today. So let's start with implicit differentiation with trig function. So our function is cosine 2x plus y equals 25 and we're asked to find the derivative of cosine 2x plus y equals 25. So to separate the terms, cosine 2x plus y and 25, so the derivative of cosine 2x plus y is negative sine u du dx, and the derivative of 25 is just a constant, so it's going to change to 0. So to simplify cosine 2x plus y, u is 2x plus y, and the derivative of u is 2 plus dy dx, because derivative of 2x is 2, derivative of y is 1 dy dx. So if we simplify this, derivative of cosine 2x plus y is simply negative sine 2x plus y times du, which is 2 plus dy dx equal to 0. Now, since we need dy dx to be by itself, we need to isolate dy over dx. Now, the common error for some students is they don't um, understand that they can distribute this factor inside the parentheses. And if we do that, if we distribute negative sine 2x plus y to 2, it will become negative 2 sine times 2x plus y. And if we distribute negative sine 2x plus y to dy dx, it will become negative sine 2x plus y dy dx equals 0. And now we're ready to isolate dy dx by what I did is I subtracted both, I mean I added both sides by sine 2x plus y dy dx to get rid of my negative sign to dy dx. So my next equation will be sine 2x plus y dy dx equal to, I just copy this because I did not um, transfer this on the other side of the equation, which is negative 2 sine times 2x plus y. And since I need dy dx by itself, I divide both sides by sine 2x plus y. So dy dx is equal to negative 2 sine 2x plus y all over sine 2x plus y. And we know that we can cancel this term and this term because they are the same, leaving us with negative 2. Therefore, the derivative of the function in terms of x is simply negative 2. Now let's find the equation of the tangent line using implicit differentiation. And the reason why we're using implicit differentiation is because our function has um, the function x and a function y. So our function here is x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 3 at point 1, 1. So we are asked to find the equation of the tangent line using implicit differentiation. So by performing implicit differentiation, f prime of x, which is the first derivative, will be negative 2x minus y all over x plus y. I did not show the, de um, the derivative step, step of this function because we all know how to use implicit differentiation in uh, finding the derivative of x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 3. Now we know that the derivative of a function is the slope of the equation of the tangent line. So f prime of x, we have or we produced the equation of our slope. And we're finding the equation of the slope or the equation of the tangent line to the curve. So what we're going to do is replace the value of x and y by our point, which is 1 and 1. x is 1 and y is 1. And by substitution method, negative 2 times 1 minus 1 all over 1 plus 2 times 1 will be this equation. And to simplify our equation, f prime of 1, 1 or point 1, 1 is equal to negative 1. So this is the slope of our tangent line to this curve. So to write the equation of the tangent line, using the point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, we have y minus 1 equals negative 1, which is our slope, times x minus 1. And that's how we write the equation of the tangent line using implicit differentiation.
Now, for our third example, we are finding the second derivative of a function using implicit differentiation. Now, before I sh show you the work, um, let me remind you that in finding the second derivative of a function using implicit differentiation, you need to simplify each equation that you finish as much as you could. And I'll explain why you need to simplify your equation using implicit differentiation um, using the higher order derivatives. So looking at our function, we have x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals 16. So we're finding the second derivative of this function in terms of x. Now, this is a new notation, but it came from, of course, the notation that we are usually using in implicit differentiation. So we have y double prime for second derivative. We also use f double prime of x to show the second derivative. And this notation right here is what we're using today. So d squared y all over dx squared means the second derivative of the function in terms of x. So let's differentiate x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals 16. So separate each term, x to the fourth, derivative of x to the fourth, derivative of y to the fourth, and derivative of 16 base in terms of x. So for the first term, the derivative of x to the fourth in terms of x is simply 4x cubed. And the derivative of y to the fourth in terms of x is simply 4y cubed dy dx. So don't forget the dy dx in your function equal to 0 because the derivative of constant is just 0. Now since our goal is to isolate dy over dx in our first derivative, I'm going to subtract 4x cubed on both sides. So now my term is 4y cubed dy dx all over negative 4x cubed. And divide both sides by 4y cubed. My dy dx is equal to negative 4x cubed all over 4y cubed. Now, we used to just have our first derivative in this form, and it's already acceptable. But since we're working on the second derivative using implicit differentiation, and I've mentioned that you need to simplify your function as much as you could, I'm going to cancel 4 so that my first derivative will just be negative x cubed all over y cubed. And you will understand why I did this, because if I'm going to take the second derivative of this function, if I have 4, it's just going to mess up my well, it's just going to make my function more complicated to differentiate. That's why I get rid of 4. So let's find a second derivative. So now we're finding the second derivative. And we know that the first derivative that we have is negative x cubed all over y cubed. Using the quotient rule, which is low d high minus high d low over low low, we can separate this term and simplify it. So we have low, copy, derivative of high, minus high, derivative of low, all over low low, or low squared. To simplify our equation, we have y cubed, copy, derivative of x cubed in terms of x is 3x squared, minus copy, and the derivative of y cubed in terms of x is 3y squared dy dx, all over y to the 6. Now, as I've mentioned, this one is a little bit unconventional to uh, Im the implicit differentiation function that we uh, used to have um, a few days ago. So now, we know that dy dx can still be changed into this function because we know that the first derivative, dy dx, is equal to negative x cubed all over y squared from the previous board. So we can simplify this by substitution. So we will change the first derivative into its equivalent um, function from our previous steps. So now dy over dx becomes negative x cubed all over y cubed. So we just copy everything. Now we have a new dy dx. So we're not isolating dy dx. This time we are substituting dy over dx with the, um, the answer that we got from the previous slide. Now, this is a complex fraction. And as I've mentioned, we need to simplify our function when we're doing implicit differentiation. So what I'm going to do is I can simplify y squared and y cubed. So if I cancel this out, I will just be left with y right here. 
So now I simplified this term in our fraction. So I'll just copy this term. And my new second term will be negative times negative is plus 3x cubed and x cubed all over y, all over y to the 6. However, this term right here is still not simplified. It's still a complex fraction. So we can further simplify this by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by y. So let's and that's do a what recap. I'm do. So we found the first derivative of our function. And we also uh, found the second derivative of the function. But now what we're doing is we're simplifying our second derivative. And we end up with negative 3x squared y cubed plus 3x cubed times x cubed all over y times y or all over y to the 6. So we're trying to simplify the second term by eliminating y and to do that we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by y. And when we multiply them out, distributing y to the first term will give us 3x squared y to the fourth and distributing y to the second term will give us 3x to the third power times x to the third power because now we can cancel y. So now we have 3x to the 6 all over y times y to the 6 becomes y to the 7. Now the numerator is still not in simplest form so we can still simplify the numerator by pulling out the greatest common factor of the first term and the second term and in this case the greatest common factor is 3x squared. So if you pull out a 3x squared what is left inside the parentheses will be y to the fourth plus x to the fourth. Now we know that y to the fourth plus x to the fourth is equal to 16. So we can still further simplify the numerator by changing this expression to 16. And now we're finished with our implicit differentiation of um, or finding the second derivative using implicit differentiation. Because all we can do now is multiply 3 and 16, which is 48, and copy x squared and y to the 7 because we cannot simplify it any further. So therefore, the second derivative of the function in terms of x is simply 48x squared all over y to the 7th.